Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar with ClueCore. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at something really fun here. Uh, I'm Matt Svensson. Uh, I'm the uh, I'm one of the developers here at ClueCore, and I'm also one of the people responsible for support here. So, I may have encountered some of you before in support issues with the with the the software. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that really excites me here because we're, we're going to talk about one of the, the, the really, really cool new features in ClueCore Omics Explorer version 3.5, which is something we call templates. And I'm going to go into detail on what templates is and what that can do for you. Uh, it's going to be rather interactive because I'm going to switch back and forth between the presentation and the actual software to give you an idea about uh, what's going on here. So, today's agenda is the following. First of all, what is templates? Uh, what's the whole point with this? What's, what's, what is it, is it we are trying to achieve with this addition to the software? Uh, I'll, I'll give it to a number of typical use cases, and I say typical because this is a feature that can be used in so many ways, and I really expect that, that people will come up with uses of, for this that, that I haven't even thought of uh, so far. So this is very exciting because what we do here is that we open up the ClueCore Omics Explorer software so you can program it yourself. You can write instructions to tell the software to do things, which is to me really, really exciting because that means you can, you can integrate this with so many other things. You can integrate it with external software, external databases, you name it. Your imagination is basically the limit. I'll also talk about what a template contains, because this is this is sort of an executable file that can run inside the Omics Explorer software. So the contents of a template are important to understand what we can do with it. I'll talk about how to configure templates. I'll talk about how to program them. We program them in, in the Python language, which is a very simple language to learn and a very useful scripting language, which has a very modern touch to it. It's very easy to work in Python. Um, and basically, a simple ClueCore Omics Explorer template is, is, uh, is extremely readable because uh, the API, the, the programming uh, interface that we have published is sort of very readable and very verbose. I'll talk about how to run templates because, as I said, these are executable files. They run in the Omics Explorer environment and uh, they can be run in very many different ways and I'll show you how to work with them. Uh, I typically work with them in one way, other people might do it in another way. We provided interfaces both for let's say the application programmer or the, the person who writes templates and interfaces that are simple for regular users. Uh, I'll talk about writing your own templates. Uh, I'll say a few words about the API, the, the um, the application programmer interface that's available to you. Um, I'll talk about how to assemble the parts of a template. And I'll say a few words about debugging templates at the end. And of course, there will be a demonstration. Uh, most of the demonstration will be interwoven with the, the slides that I'm showing you here, uh, rather than being a demo at the end. So. Uh, Instead of just talking about things and then showing them, I'll be going back and forth between the presentation and uh, the software. So that's today's agenda, basically. And I expect this to take about an hour, a little less maybe, uh, with some time, about 10 minutes at the end, for questions. First of all, what is templates? What's the idea here? Well, it's a new functionality that basically makes it possible for you to execute commands that control ClueCore Omics Explorer. And that can be used in so many different ways. One obvious way uh, that I use myself a lot is to, if you have like three typical plots that you usually have uh, on screen, whenever you do something, you usually bring those plots up. Instead of, instead of using the mouse and the commands in the, in, in the software to bring up each plot individually. You could just run a template that configures the whole set of plots for you. That's something I use myself when developing the software because it takes a lot of tedious moments out of the, the equation there. Uh, 
A template is written in the Python language, as I already mentioned, and version 3.7 of Python is bundled with Clicker Omics Explorer and pre-configured to run templates. So if you just want to run this out of the box, it's pre-configured for you. Uh, you can, of course, use your own installation of Python. There's instructions in the manual if you want to do that. Uh, in certain settings, for example, if you work as, as, as a bioinformatician, you might ha already have a Python installation with lots of packages that you already use. Then you might want to use your own. And there's instructions how to do that. It's rather simple to do it. Templates are executed in the Python interpreter, and they send commands to the Clucore Omics Explorer program in an interactive way. This means that, that, that uh, the full power of the Python language is available to you. And as I already mentioned, if you've got other packages that do things for you, you can integrate that with this environment. So you can basically integrate this in an existing calculation pipeline or in an existing analysis setup that you already have. And the nice thing with Python is, as I said, it's a simple language to learn. So even if you don't work with Python today, maybe you work in R or a different language, it's very easy to interface this to other things. We also ship with the, the program several example templates that show basic functionality, how these things work. Um, and they range from simple examples, just controlling the statistics window to and bringing up a few plots to more advanced things like how to connect to, to an external database server and download data from there. So template is very flexible. And basically anyone can write templates. You, you, you do have to have a little bit of basic programming skills, but you'll pick that up fast. And it's easy to follow the, the steps if you if you take a look at this example templates to get you started. And the API that we have published is built to be very simple to use. And I'll show an example here, um, just how the API is built up. In the help menu nowadays, we, we have a new item here, template API reference manual. If you click on that, it brings up the reference manual. Now it opened on my different screen here. And this manual here, is your basic, let's zoom out a little bit, your basic API reference. This is generated through the use of something called Doxygen, but it gives you all the details you need to know. And this is on a very detailed level. The easiest way to get started is to try out the example templates. I'll get to those later on. But there's a full documentation of all the details available to you here. and. Most of the commands are built up in a very similar way. Uh, the commands you use to control a template are um, there we go. The commands you use to, to control a template are built up in a way so that they're very intuitive to use. I'll, I'll show that when we get to the, the, the source code for a template and see what this this can do for for you. Other things here wor worth mentioning. Um, a template can have a user interface, meaning that it can ask the user for input. So you can have a template which is interactive with the user and asks the user questions to get you to a starting point. This is typically useful if you, if you make like a template uh, that contains a statistical test, for example, where you can input things into that test and give, give preconditions for the test from the user. So, oh, sorry. There we go. Um, there we go. Now, um, the actual solution here um, could be rather interesting because a template is a single file. This means that a template packages the entire thing with, with a script and all the other files it needs into a single uh, file that can be distributed. And this is really useful because that means that you can you can bundle together executable code that tells Omics Explorer to do something with other things. And those other things that, that, that a template contain is, uh, of course, the code for the script, but also a configuration file, and maybe other things. In reality, a QC template file, which is our um, extension for the templates, contains things because they are, in reality, zip archives. I'll show you an example here on the screen. Here, I've got several 
uh, QC template files. And if I take one of them, I can actually extract it with a zip archive uh, extractor here. And there we go. There we see what's inside it. So these are basically zip files that have been renamed into the name QC template, uh, which is the extension we use. And when Clue Explorer is installed, a QC template file is associated with the software. So a QC template file works in the way that if you double click on it, it will start Omix Explorer and execute the template for you. If you drag and drop it onto Clue Omics Explorer, it will execute as well. There are different ways to execute templates, but just to give you, give you an idea of how this is used. I'll talk more about execution later here. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that since these things are zip archives, uh, they are, of course, uncompressed when they are executed. So they are taken out and uncompressed to a temporary folder where uh, the software will be working. And this temporary folder can be accessed from your Python scripts, which allows you to, to, to for example, if you want to write a Python script that generates a data set and then opens it, it's perfectly possible to do so. We actually do have uh, one, at least one example that does that in the example templates that are available. And just to give an outline of how this can be used, and I say an outline, uh, as I mentioned earlier here, uh, this is a feature that we expect to be used in so many different ways. It's a feature that we expect to be used in ways we haven't even thought of yet. But the typical or the, the, the main feature here is if you want to run the exact same analysis several times, or if you just have like uh, an analysis setup you want to share with someone else, you could actually write a template to set the program up in that way so you can repeat, repeatedly run the same exact steps uh, over and over again. That's pretty interesting. You could, of course, integrate Clicker Omics Explorer with existing workflows. If you let your Python script extract a file that was produced by earlier steps in a long analysis pipeline, and transform that data into something that Clue Omics Explorer can read. You can basically write a Python program that, that integrates with something else. There will be such examples in the, in the future. We will keep expanding the examples that are shipped with Omics Explorer continuously. But we already have one example that does something like this uh, available. And the available example that, that, that uh, we have today is something that downloads FTP data, which downloads data from a database online and transforms it into a Clue Core data set, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> and the example of configuring your favorite analysis setup. Um, of course, that, that's what I said I, di I did myself. I, I, do, I do it quite often, where I have like four different plots I usually have on the screen. Well, I've, I've written a script to do that for me. And of course, this is, this is a great tool. Uh, using a template, not writing it yourself, but using it, can be a very great tool for, for new users to get used to the software. Uh, we provide a couple of very simple templates to, to, to aid the user uh, to get to know the, the uh, statistics feature of Omex Explorer, for example, that can be used as learning tools for a new, unexperienced user. Um, and again, for sharing things. Any sort of file can be bundled with a template. And one of the file types, of course, that is very reasonable to bundle with a template is a GE data file or a, uh, an Omex Explorer um, data file, which means you could take a data set, store it inside a template, and with that, create code that opens it and sets it up in a certain way. This means you, you'll bundle it into one single file, and then you can take that file and share it with your colleague, and they can run that inside Omics Explorer. The really nice thing with this is that, that, that uh, you get full control, and you can, you can actually add a user interface and so on to it, and you can add custom coloring and so on which might be a very good way of sharing uh, data sets. And a template, 
as I said, it contains at, at minimum two things. One thing is something we call the configuration file and a Python script. Uh, the configuration file uh, sets the, the template up so that, that um, the software knows, for example, what it's named. It has a description of it. Uh, it also tells the software a few things about the template, such as if whether or not the, the template requires a data set. You can write templates that don't require a data set, and you can write templates that do. But there, there's a difference between them, because of, of course, if a template assumes that there is a data set, um, it's a good idea to, to, to actually make sure that there is one when you open it. Also, uh, this, the configuration file um, contains uh, descriptions of if, if the template has a user interface that is shown initially when the template is started up, that is also specified in the configuration file because that initial user interface is shown before the Python script starts executing. The other thing that's mandatory is the Python script. That's the executable part of the template. That's the code that runs when the template executes. And if we go back to um, the stuff that I extracted from the template file when I extracted it. Remember now it was a zip file, I extracted it to, to a folder here. Um, if we look at this, it contains three things. One of them is something called main.py. This is, this is really uh, the Python script that will execute when the template runs. The other thing here is the description text file, and I can open that in a regular text editor. This is the description of uh, the template, what it does for me. And it contains a few things, what the template is named, because when you list the templates in the software, this, this name will be used. There is a short and, an, and a longer description that are used, uh, again, when the template is listed in the, in the software. I'll show you that in a moment. It also tells us this important thing. Does it require a data set? And in this case, it does, because this template here is actually a little template that uh, allows me to, to um, run a t-test. And to run a t-test, I need a data set, of course. The template also has an initial uh, user interface, which is specified down here. Uh, in this case, the user interface contains an image. It contains some text. It contains a few widgets. That is... Uh, uh, user interface elements that can be interacted with. I will also have something here called widget defaults, which actually sets one of the widgets up to have a default value. We'll get to that more in a moment here, but that's, that's the basic setup of this, this, this uh, template here. I'll get back to this template when we get to it. Um, the configuration file contains, as we said here, the name, a description, whether it requires a data set, and configuration of that initial user interface. We'll see how this works and how this, this transforms into actual things on the screen in a moment here. I just want to mention that we can skip because I showed that in the, the, um, the um, text editor. I just want to mention that the specification of the user interface here um, the specific thing that, that interacts with the user here really is the widgets, which are specified here um, on these four lines under dialog widgets. And this is this is rather simple. It tells us the type of widget. They are listed in the the, um, the um, manual. The second thing here is is the name of the widget, and the third thing here is a text that can be displayed that will be displayed next to it. Again, uh, we'll see how this uh, works when we, when we see this, uh, this uh, template executing. And in the case of the spinner widget here, a spinner widget is one of those small things where you, where you, can, you can type a value or you can press two little arrows to change it. The spinner widget here is called QValue Spinner, and that one actually is set up to start at the value 0.1 which is a reasonable value for a Q value. Okay, so that's the, 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 the configuration file. The Python script, which we will go into more detail on uh, in a moment here, has a couple of important things. First of all, um, the Python script needs 
uh, to have the, the, the Clue Core API imported to it. And that's what we do on this line here. And if you use the standard installation uh, of Clue Core Omics Explorer, this is all you have to do. If you use your own version of Omics Explorer, you'll have to put the, the API file within, the, within your uh, installation. There's instructions in the manual on how to do that. Uh, but the important thing here is that, that you'll have to, to allow or import the Clue Core API here. The second thing, which is exemplified by this Clue Core Omics Explorer GUI, we, uh, we have a number of objects and a number of, of, of fixed <coughs> items available for you. And the basic namespace is, of course, the Clue Core namespace. Within that, there's several different objects. One of them is the user interface. And basically what I do here on this line is to create a shortcut. So the name GUI will refer to Clue Course Omics Explorer GUI. So I don't have to type out all of that in the rest of the code here. Uh, the second thing I do is to close the getting started window if that is open uh, and to maximize the screen of the, of the, um, uh, of the software. Then I get the active plot and I close all the other plots, but the active one. So since we do want to have an active plot here, uh, of course, the configuration file required a data set to be open. Now, I just want to show you a little bit more about uh, what the Python interface may look like, because this is, this is uh, again, as I said, rather simple. It requires only basic programming skills to get started with, and it's rather straightforward. A simple template like this one is rather, oops, oops that was the wrong file. That was the file I wanted to open. It's rather self-explanatory. So if I, if I open this up in, in a development environment, this is what you'll see. Um, we can continue looking at this and see what, what the template does. It closes that plot. Closes, sorry, it closes everything but that plot. So if we have several plots open, it closes everything but the active one. If this variable list exists, it is deleted. The reason for that is that we create the variable list with this name. And if you run the template several times, you don't want that created over and over again. So if there is a variable list name like this, it is removed. We also um, make an alias here, dialog equals clue core templates GUI. This is because I want to have a shortcut called dialog, which I use down here, uh, to uh, access data from the initial GUI. The reason I do that is that um, this is an interactive template. This, ha this has a user interface specified by that um, configuration file we saw earlier, this one, and it has three widgets here. And they're named annotation dropdown, group drop dropdown, and direction dropdown. There's a fourth one here called Q value spinner as well. And I want to access the values from those and use those in the execution. So what I do is that I get the annotation selected by the user here from the widget annotation dropdown. I get the name of the value in that annotation from this widget. I get the direction of the, the test from, from, from the third widget, and I get the Q value selected by the user from the fourth widget here. So basically, this is a shortcut to the user interface, and here's the name of what you're getting something from, and here's where you assign it. And one of the nice features uh, with a scripting language like Python is that it's automatically typed. So, so basically, when I get some value like this from these things, they are automatically uh, assigned the right data type. Now, another thing which is very typical for the Clue Core um, API here is this style of accessing things. So it's basically an assignment. I do an assignment to a variable of something from the program, and it's it's working like this. So rather than calling functions all the time, I do assignments. It works in the different in, in, in the the other direction as well because we can go on here. Now we want to set up the statistics according to what the user had selected. So what I first do 
is that I get something called the core. I'll explain in a moment what that is. That's not really important at the moment, but what I'm doing now is I'm accessing the statistics setup object for the data set. And what does that mean? Well, that is all the statistics settings. Basically what you can do in the statistics doc window in the software, you can do through the statistics object. And what I'm doing now is I'm setting up the test type to be a two group test. I'm setting up the annotation to be the, that name that the user selected over there. Uh, I set up, set up all these things, annotation value, test direction, and the Q value for the statistics object to be all those things that the user selected. And the nice thing here is that since I'm setting up the statistics object inside Omics Explorer, if there is a statistics window open, the settings will be set to those values that the user selected. So if this dialog guides the user through a simple interface which exp explains things a bit more, uh, they will see their changes reflected in the software. So this can be used as a learning tool. The next thing we, we do is just to show the statistics doc window and we also show the, the, the uh, statistics general tab so that all these settings will be visible to the user. Again, this is, this is a rather um, good learning tool for an inexperienced user. So that's the basics here. Um, I talked about the core just a moment ago and one of the um, things needed when you write templates is that you understand the data model behind this. There's three concepts that are really important here. One is the plot, which we get here. A plot is a window on the screen. That's a window onto a data set. It could be a PCA plot. It could be a heat map plot. It's a window with a view on a data set. Now, a plot always has a core, and the core associated with a plot contains things like the statistic settings. And if you have run the software before and you've, you've, you're used to working with Omics Explorer, you know that there's something called synchronized plots. Two plots that are synchronized, they share the same core. So that's the core data set model that you have to understand. If you have two plots that are not synchronized, they have one core each. And the core is the, 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 um, the settings object that contains statistics and a few other things. This is explained a lot more in the, the, the manual. The third level is the data set. And the data set is what creates a core. And there's always only one data set object for all cores that share it. The data set object contains, for example, um, um, the annotations for the data set. It contains the raw data, which is used for calculations and so on. So let's go on and see what happens here. We do a few more things after opening the statistics window. We create a variable list. We select that variable list. We open the variable window. Oh, sorry. Uh, get the active variables, which is the active variables view. We tell it to show the Q value column, sort things on the Q value column, and sort ascending. And why do we do that? Well, that means that the, the most significant Q value will be at the top of that active variables list. Now we check how many variables we still have. Again, assignment, as you see here, very easy to use. Uh, very readable and simple to the user. And if we do have any variables left, we set up a number of plots here. We set up a box plot. I won't go into the details here, but we set up a box plot, set up the axis for it. We set up a heat map plot, and then we tile the windows. If we don't have any variables left, well, <laughs> then we can't show anything. And uh, we just show an error message to the user. So this is a basic walkthrough of what this little template does. And 